Well, so what can we expect from the economy this year? Let's ask our next guest. We always are happy to see Mario Gabelli, chairman and CEO of Gamco Investors. Mario, great to have you with us. So who's right here, or who's more right here? Is it Jamie Dimon, or is it Barry Sternlich? You got a uh, great question, Doug. Uh, good way to start. And uh, basically, from my point of view, uh, the economy over the sec next uh, couple of months is going to have a challenge. Clearly, uh, the banks, uh, with regards to... Uh, hold to maturity accounting with regards to what's going on in the uh, commercial real estate, what's going on with regards to uh, uh, funds flowing out are, are, are a challenge. But we've gone through bank crises. This is my seventh since I've been investing uh, and, in business. And uh, But the banks are stronger. So Jamie is right about that, and we'll figure this one out. With regards to the economy, if you have the industrial, the consumer sector, I think uh, car sales will hold up. I think the consumer's in okay shape. You just look at the balance sheet of the consumer. On the other side, the industrial hmm. side, because of the IRA and the IIJA, I, uh, those are the two government programs. Uh, certain sectors of the industrial sector will do well. But the major event is China. China is 20% of the world GDP, and they're going to activate their economy, and it's going to do and provide some ballast through cross uh, uh country trades uh, in the second half of the year, the first quarter of next year. So uh, on balance, uh, we uh, the stock market, however, I just don't think it's going to do very much. I think it'll go up and down, but the economy will uh, go through. So I'm kind of more borderline on the Jamie Dimon's case. What about, uh, Barry, what about 2024, no, Mario? Uh, do you see that as a better year than 2023 because... Um, for example, some of the things that are stumbling blocks potentially right now yeah. may have may have been passed. And number two, uh, China really may be back and humming again. Yeah, I think you've uh, articulated and highlighted a lot of those dynamics. Look, I'm you know sectors of the economy that I like, like defense spending, uh, sectors that are also somewhat uh, not as uh, tied to uh, the e economic sensitivity historically to housing, but housing, which is down sharply, they have an enormous backlog of demand coming up. Automobiles, we're materially underspent over the last several years, and there's no lower cost cars available. So that's another pent up demand. In addition to that, depending on how the dollar reacts and uh, what we do on our exports, uh, clearly that'll be an important part of the US economy. But the most important thing is allow the free market to function and allow us to uh, take advantage of these global opportunities. Uh, that's the other challenge that I see. Mario, it's Morgan. It's great to speak with you again. The fact that it, this is your seventh bank crisis, crisis that, you, that you have experienced, are there certain ways that these types of crises play out? And what does that mean in terms of being an investor when you're seeing cost of capital go up, when you're seeing credit tighten right now? Are there opportunities in, in financial sector in terms of investing? Well, I always worry about shadow banking. I always worry about private credit. I always worry about the unregulated sections that have sprouted. But let's go back. 1973, 4, 5, 6, when inflation hit, uh, you had unforeseen bankruptcies, whether it was Continental Illinois Bank, the Herstadt Bank, the Republic, blah, blah. In the 1990s, you had the SNL crisis, and that laid this, the foundation of an accounting change. FASB, uh, financial standard number 157, came in, which allowed the banks to hold to maturity. And that, as a result of the Fed uh, not raising rates because they thought it was transitory, uh, that is inflation, and then they're raising rates sharply caused that part of the balance sheet. Uh, the good news is that, uh, uh, you know, certain Dodd-Frank regulations were put in place. They just got to re-examine those. Uh, the 0789, uh, don't you remember the, uh, uh, the, the statement, uh, let's dance until the music stops? I mean, you know, that's why the Bear and Lehman... You know, the leverage was uh, un unaccountable for, you know, it's just not acceptable. So uh, what do I see? Nothing different. I think uh, in 2024, you'll have an election in the United States. <laughs> and uh, you basically try to get the economy uh, strengthened by that time. And uh, I think the comparisons will be a lot easier for companies in terms of reported earnings.